The Traveller moved across the face of the iron world. It opened the earth and stitched shut the sky. It made life possible. In these things, there is always symmetry. Do you understand? This is not the beginning, but it is the reason. Chosen from the dead by the Traveller's ghosts, guardians are those rare few able to wield the light as a weapon. A dead thing made by a dead power in the shape of the dead. A thing that will only ever kill. Welcome back Guardians. Today we are discussing how ghosts select their guardian. What makes us special, why we were chosen. When a ghost scans a body, what is it trying to detect? Whilst there are no clear answers, I would like to use the law to suggest three theories and I would love some feedback from the community on this topic. If you have something else to add, leave it in the comments below. The artwork at the beginning of this video was supplied by Brandon McCammy, aka Gamma Trap. See his website for his latest paintings, watch videos of his works in progress and subscribe to his newsletter as well as purchase any latest t-shirts. The link is in the description below. Thanks to Anon Pig for his assistance with this script and also Trey. If you are watching this video in the first two hours of release or between 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in US, I will be live over on Twitch. All donations on stream this month go towards Movember, which is for men's health. And finally, feel free to join the weekly podcast with Destiny Down Under. All the download links are in the description below. This is Mylan Games and I hope you enjoy this latest Destiny Law episode. Many people in response to the How Do Guardians Die video ask the question, how does a ghost revive a guardian for the very first time? As I speculated that one of the essential elements required to revive a guardian is that they must have some light remaining. This video is a partial response to that question. So I speculate that there could be three different elements to how a ghost chooses a guardian. The first is compatibility. Ghosts cannot just revive anyone. The right guardian for one ghost might be the wrong for another. It is rare, but not impossible, that a ghost will discover more than one compatible guardian. The second is personality, or for cynical players out there, obedience. There is some evidence to suggest that we are selected based on the likelihood of our loyalty to the Traveller and blinded obedience to join this cosmic war. And lastly, and probably the most interesting aspect about selecting a guardian, is that we have already been mutated, changed, or influenced by the Traveler's light, allowing us to channel the light as a weapon. Skip to any section, as indicated by the time on the screen. Let's go through each possibility using the Grimoire cards and item descriptions. The first, compatibility. We know that numerous Destiny cutscenes reinforce that ghosts can take centuries to find their guardian. In the opening of the Dakin King, your ghost says, As I saw the other ghosts find their guardians, and the centuries went by, I wondered if I'd ever find you. And then I did. There is constant reference to this seemingly predetermined bond between ghost and guardian, this element of compatibility. Ghosts seem to be able to recognize this amongst the ancient corpses. For example, take the conversation between two ghosts trying to find their guardian in Ghost Fragment Ghost 2. It reads, Obsidian floated closer. That's okay. It has been a while. I guess you haven't found yours yet. Cassiopeia projected glumness. Not yet, but I've been looking on Mars for that long, at least. I'm optimistic. You should be. I was just at the city last year. A lot more of us are starting to find our guardians lately. What's that? The reference to my guardian implies that there's this level of predetermined bond between guardian and ghost. Once the ghost has formed this bond, has risen the guardian for the very first time, they are extremely loyal to the newly created guardian. In fact, there is only one instance I know of where a ghost actually leaves their guardian, and that is Dredge and Yore. Initially, I thought it reasonable to speculate that ghosts can only have one guardian, or they are destined to only form this bond once. However, of course, we have the case of Shin Malfur, 
who inherited Jaron Ward's ghost after his death at the hands of Dredgen Yor. However, considering Shin was Jaron's apprentice, their compatibility may have been very similar, therefore allowing the transfer. To summarize this first point, I think there is some element of compatibility and even fate when selecting a guardian, almost a predetermined bond between guardian and ghost. Whilst ghosts may not be limited to only one guardian, I think the selection criteria of a guardian is so specific, it is very rare for a ghost to be compatible with multiple guardians. Shin Malfur is likely a rare case. I don't really know what determines this compatibility, however I do have some speculation on what the selection criteria is for a guardian. Which leads us to the next point, personality slash obedience. For those who know the story of the Collapse, you understand that Rasputin crippled the Traveller from leaving our system, as Rasputin predicted the Traveller would flee with the arrival of the Darkness. Rasputin also predicted that by forcing the Traveller to stay, the Traveller would have to create a defence mechanism, which turned out to be the Ghost. So the whole purpose of the Ghost is to create an army to defend the Traveller. So consequently, it would make sense that Ghosts would only select Guardians that would join this cause, join the fight against the Darkness. The greatest evidence for this comes from the Osiris Grimoire card. It reads, how much of a guardian's personality and memories were true? How much had been fabricated by their ghost? Did guardians share particular personality traits? A willingness to yield to authority, a tendency to do anything anyone asked for the promise of uncertain reward, a blind knight errant mentality? Had the traveller manufactured all of you as living weapons? The Silver Grimmel card reinforces that Guardians cannot remember their past lives. It reads, Like all Guardians, Fenchurch has no memories before the first time his ghost resurrected him. These two cards pose some really interesting questions about whether ghosts can manipulate our memories. And if they can manipulate our memories, maybe they can look into our past memories. Maybe the ghost scan allows them to see into the past memories of Guardians, and they only select those heroic blind knights, personalities, who they believe will wholeheartedly support the Traveller. Of course, some ghosts have made mistakes with their guardian choice. Literally every interesting character that questions their existence, Osiris, Toland, are clear examples of maybe ghosts who made the wrong choice of guardians. This idea that ghosts somehow detect guardians who will blindly follow the Traveller is reinforced in the Legends of the Black Garden Grimoire card, where the warlock Pujari has a vision of the Black Garden and a conversation with the darkness. It reads, You are a dead thing made by dead power in the shape of the dead. All you ever do is kill. You do not belong here. This is a place of life. To be less cynical about this selection process, Ghosts may select Guardians based on their heroic personalities. Shin Malfur may be the greatest evidence for this. For those who are familiar with the story of The Last Word, Jaron Ward takes on a young boy apprentice named Shin Malfur. Jaron Ward is ultimately killed by Dredgen Yor. However, his ghost seeks out Shin Malfur and it is implied that Shin becomes a Guardian, inheriting Jaron's ghost. Shin would later go on to become a gunslinger hunter and golden gun Dredgen Yor putting an end to his reign. This is the only instance I can think of where a ghost was inherited and did not revive the dead. You may argue that the ghost accepted Shin as the new guardian because of his similarities with Jaron Ward. Practically raised by Jaron Ward, he shared very similar philosophies and heroism to him. Before Jaron's death, Shin says this about Jaron's ghost in the Ghost Fragment Last Word 3. From time to time, I caught its gaze lingering on me, but always assumed the attention was a result of the bond Jaron and I had. He was a father to me. At that time, I didn't know why he'd singled me out as someone to care for, someone to protect. After all the loss, I welcomed it. But looking back, taking in the arm's length at which he kept the others, I guess I should have known, or at least suspected there was more to it. It seems that Shin not only shares a bond with Jaron Ward, which may have resulted in him being selected as a Guardian, however there is something else, something more, which I believe could be my last theory. Beings that have been changed by the Traveller's Light. 
To summarise point two, guardians were created to defend the traveller and to believe that ghosts have some way of determining the potential loyalty of the ancient corpses that they scan before reviving them. On top of that, they likely manipulate our memories to further solidify our loyalty to the traveller. Maybe exos require ongoing mind wipes as they are more adept at retrieving memories in comparison to their human counterparts. The less skeptical person might argue that ghosts just select potential heroes and warriors from the ancient dead. Let's move on to the last point. Ghosts can detect some sort of mutation. Well, mutation for humans and awoken or some sort of internal ability for the exos that allows guardians to wield the light, to use the light as a weapon. There is definitely an intrinsic characteristic that guardians have that gifts them this ability to wield the light. This is reinforced by the Guardian's Grimoire card, which reads, Chosen from the dead by the Traveler's ghosts, Guardians are those rare few able to wield the light as a weapon. A conversation between Dredgenior and his ghost also reinforces that we have something special about us, an ability that is already present. The Ghost Fragment Thorn 3 card reads, Why'd you pick me? It doesn't work that way. Was I special? You were, but only as special as any other. You were all special. Seems to contradict the word, don't it? Not in my estimation. If we're all special, are any of us special? Is that what you want, to be special? This card not only reinforces the idea that guardians already have some trait that the ghost can detect, but also my first point, compatibility. Dredgen says, why'd you pick me? The ghost responds, doesn't work that way. This predetermined bond between ghost and guardian. There is also some evidence that the fundamental forces of arc, solar and void already exist inside of you and that everyone has this light. However, not everyone can access that power. Ghosts may unlock this and amplify this using the traveler's light. This is reinforced by the storm call of Grimoire Carter, which reads, Harmony within, hurricane without. Meditate, focus. Draw the static from within. The arc is inside all life. You must feel it take hold, let it flow through, but not consume you. You are a conduit between sky and earth, electricity and matter, life and death. You are a weapon. And the Guardian Abilities card reads, Even without a firearm, a Guardian is a radiant engine of destruction. While these abilities rise from within, Guardians master their power in different ways. The question is, what allows someone to access this power? What separates us from the other ancient dead who are not eligible guardians? I believe that to be a guardian, your biological structure must have been mutated, changed, or influenced by the traveler in some way. In the case of the Exo, I wonder whether all Exos have this ability inherently, due to their creation during the Golden Age and their influence by the traveler. But in regards to humans or even Awoken, we know that the Traveller can change them. The first evidence of this is Commander Jacob Hardy. Commander Hardy, with his team, was the first human to make contact with the Traveller, and it appears that the Traveller influenced his biology. This is reinforced in the Ghost Fragment Human card, which suggests that Commander Hardy's cognition and lifespan has been increased. It reads, It turned out well. Look at me. Look at us. We're talking to a 90-year-old man, a 90-year-old who's never been sharper. I'm miles ahead of every cognitive benchmark. What's happened to me is good. What's happened to all of us is good. When we crested the rise and made visual contact with the artifact, I don't think any of us dare dream that it would end this well. Ghost Fragment Human 4 further reinforces the change in cognition of Commander Hardy due to his interaction with the Traveller. It reads... I knew I'd never fly another mission like that. I recognize the need for a new love. That's why I threw my fresh cognitive skills into understanding the Traveller. How can one entity so quickly and utterly remake an entire world? 50 years later, I'm conversant in high mathematics, particularly topological thoughts and the slippery irreality of light. 
Not to mention that in the opening scenes of Destiny, the speaker acknowledges that human lifespan tripled. Now, this could be a reflection of the medical advances made with new technology of the Golden Age. However, the experiences and records of Commander Hardy seem to suggest that the Traveller can influence us on a biological level. Those that have been influenced by the Traveller in their past lives, like Commander Hardy, may retain a small portion of light or some remnants of their interaction with the Traveller, a biological marker for those organic beings, or traces of light in the circuitry of an exo. Something that indicates to the ghost that this being has been changed by the Traveller in their past life. If this is true, it could be the most essential aspect to choosing a Guardian. Regardless of compatibility, personality, obedience, heroism, to be a Guardian you must have been influenced by the Traveller's light, mutated, change, affected in some way. A spark that a ghost can reignite. That concludes this latest Destiny Lore episode. I hope this has helped clarify how ghosts select guardians. And if you'd like to support the channel, leave the words Blinded Knight to represent that we were selected based on the ease that a ghost could manipulate our memory to fight a cosmic war between the light and the dark. As usual, it's been a pleasure. This is Marlin Games. Peace.